Welcome to everyone for the presentation. Myself, Sai Krishna Chada, researcher at Electromobility Research Group, University of Kaiserslautern, Germany. On behalf of my co-authors, Ankit Purbai, Daniel Georges, Achim Ebert, and Roman Teutsch, I would like to present to you our topic, Ecological Adaptive Cruise Control for Urban Environments Using Signal Phase and Timing Information. First and foremost, I'd like to explain you our motivation for choosing this topic. To improve safety and driver comfort, the present-day vehicles in the market are equipped with advanced driver assistance systems such as adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning assistance, emergency braking assistance, etc. Nowadays, there is an extensive focus both in the automobile industry and academia on developing ADAS systems that can significantly reduce the energy consumption in electric vehicles. Therefore, with the primary objective to enhance energy efficiency of the host car, in addition to providing safety and driving comfort to the driver, the ecological adaptive cruise control is being actively researched. In this work, our focus is on electric vehicles. Although the EVs are regarded as a sustainable mobility solution due to their significant contribution to reduce tailpipe emissions, there is a need to reduce their energy consumption even further as it would directly benefit in increasing the driving range and thereby can help in decreasing the range anxiety among the EV buyers. Over the years, researchers have been focusing on reducing the energy consumption firstly from the vehicle perspective, integrating lightweight components into the vehicle and also efforts on improving the powertrain efficiency have been undertaken. On the other hand, in terms of driving behavior, there is an extensive literature available on increasing the driver's driving style through eco-driving, also developing eco-routing algorithms to select driving routes that require less energy consumption, and moreover, controlling the longitudinal motion of the vehicle by tracking an energy-optimal speed trajectory. Previous literature on ecological adaptive cruise control concept focused majorly on car following scenario in which the modal predictive control uses the future information of the route such as road speed limits, road elevation along with the preceding vehicle future velocities to compute an energy optimal control actions for the host car. These studies focus majorly on highway driving applications. To be applicable for urban environments, the existing problem formulations certainly need a revision in terms of including the additional constraints due to the traffic light signals which have a significant influence on the energy consumption. Moreover, energy efficient longitudinal control of the host car in the absence of a preceding vehicle is rarely investigated in the literature. Therefore, in this work, contributions are made to fill these research gaps. A point to be noted that in this work, it is assumed that the host car is capable of receiving the signal phase and timing information from traffic light signals in real time. Receiving this information is certainly possible with the recent advancements in intelligent transportation systems and wireless communications through infrastructure to vehicle communication. Coming to the contributions in this work, firstly, an ecological ACC concept is designed to function in urban environments and guarantee best energy efficiency for the host car throughout. The ecological ACC uses two linear MPCs, namely Eco MPC 1, which helps the host car to navigate through signalized intersections by following a green wave optimized speed in the absence of a preceding vehicle. An Eco MPC 2 is used to perform car following by maintaining a desired intervehicular distance to the preceding vehicle when it is in range to the host car. Moreover, an appropriate switching strategy is designed in this work to operate between the two controllers and the performance of the individual controllers is evaluated against the state of the art. And finally, results of the proposed ecological ACC strategy are critically analyzed from a simulative study. In this figure, the ecological ACC layout can be visualized. As already mentioned, ecological ACC in this work is combination of two linear MPCs. The optimization is based on the available future information such as signal phase and timing information, preceding vehicle velocities, minimum and maximum road speed limits, and road elevation. This information is provided to the switching logic, which will be presented in the next slide, selects the appropriate controller if the switching criteria is satisfied. Furthermore, the optimal control sequence used star is obtained from either of these controllers at every time step and is provided as input to the plant which is the host vehicle. The measured state variables from the host vehicle such as host vehicle velocity, intervehicle distance between the host car and the preceding car and the relative distance between the host car and the upcoming traffic light signal are also used as inputs to the switching logic. The conditions for switching between controllers are demonstrated in this figure. 
The host car is equipped with a distance sensor and receives the signal phase and timing information. The major deciding parameter is the intervehicle distance DREL between the host vehicle and the preceding vehicle. If DREL is larger than a limit value D limit, which is nothing but the sensor range, assumed as 100 meters in this work, it is considered that the preceding vehicle is not in range of the sensors. This scenario is illustrated here. If this condition is not true, that is the preceding vehicle is within the sensor range, Eco MPC 2 is engaged to perform car following. The corresponding scenario is shown here. Let us look at the preceding vehicle in the range scenario first. The influence of the traffic light signal on the host car is considered only if the relative distance to the upcoming traffic light is within the distance DTS limit. Based on the simulations, the value of DTS limit is chosen as 200 meters as the results showed smooth deceleration maneuvers of the host car. It is to be noted that within this distance, the upcoming phase is calculated based on time to reach the signal using the host car current velocity. If the host car is within this limit and the calculated upcoming phase is red, then the host car stops tracking the preceding vehicle by removing the constraint on comfort distance and prepares to stop energy efficiently at the traffic light signal. If either the upcoming phase is not red or the relative distance to the upcoming traffic light is greater than DTS limit, the car performs car following using Eco MPC 2. If we look at the preceding vehicle not in the sensor range scenario, first the optimal green wave intersection velocity range must be calculated. In order to understand the further steps, let us see how to calculate the green wave intersection. The green wave intersection range can be calculated using this formula. Here, DTSI represents the distance to the ith traffic light signal, RIJ represents the start time of the jth red phase of the ith traffic light signal. Similarly, GIJ represents the start time of the jth green phase of the ith traffic light signal. Vmin and Vmax are the minimum and maximum speed limits respectively. The procedure to calculate the green wave intersection is explained in detail as follows. In the step 1, let us assume for the first traffic light, the start time of the first green phase first red phase, second green phase, second red phase and so on is 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, 120 seconds and so on respectively. The signal phase and timing of various signalized intersection in the route of the host car is shown here as a space-time diagram. Also the distance to the first traffic light is assumed as 400 meters. Checking with the first green phase slot and substituting its corresponding value into the formula gives an optimal speed range to reach the first signalized traffic light at green phase. If a range is found, then continue to step 2. Otherwise, check with other green phase slots. Otherwise, stopping at first traffic signal is unavoidable. After an intersection is found in the previous step, now we look for a velocity range with which the host car can cross both the first and the signalized intersections at green phase. Therefore, using the signal phase and timing of the second traffic light signal, the velocity intersection range is calculated by looping through all the green phase slots. If a speed range is found, then calculate its intersection with the range obtained in step 1. If an intersection range is found, repeat the procedure for the next traffic signal until stopping at ith traffic signal is unavoidable. In the final step, from the last feasible speed range, set the reference velocity VREF to maximum value in the speed range to reduce the overall trip time. So, coming back to our switching logic, if a green wave velocity intersection is found using the method explained previously, then the Eco MPC 1 is used to track the reference velocity VREF to meet the traffic light signals at green phase. If the green wave velocity intersection is not feasible, then stopping at the next traffic signal cannot be avoided. Therefore, similar to the previous condition, as soon as the relative distance to the upcoming traffic light is within the DTS limit, the host car will decelerate to stop at the immediate traffic light signal at red phase. If the relative distance to the upcoming traffic light is far away, then the vehicle is advised to travel at driver set speed because in any case the vehicle is going to stop at the immediate traffic light signal afterwards. The longitudinal dynamics of the host car are influenced by the longitudinal forces and vehicle resistances and can be mathematically described using this equation, in which FT, FP are the traction and braking forces, FR, FA and FG are the rolling, aerodynamic and grading resistance forces. In this work, a half map approximation of the EV power consumption map is used, which is shown in the figure. The reason is that it has a smaller approximation error as compared to full map approximation. The electric vehicle power consumption is defined as a function of velocity VH and traction force FT and is approximated using the second order polynomial equation. With regard to constraints, firstly, due to vehicle physical limitations, the traction force and braking force are limited by the maximum traction force Ft max and maximum braking force Fp max respectively. 
Additionally, there are regulatory constraints on road speed limits which the host vehicle must obey. To ensure a safe distance to the preceding vehicle and track the preceding vehicle robustly by maintaining the desired inter-vehicle distance, additional constraints are provided as shown here. Moreover, to minimize jerks and increase the driving comfort, the variation between the traction force and consecutive steps must be maintained within Delta FE Max. Finally, the constraints due to the traffic light signals are enforced such that the host vehicle avoids crossing traffic light signals when the phase is red and tries to stop as close as possible to the stop line in such a scenario. The quadratic optimization problem for the Eco MPC-1 in the absence of a preceding vehicle is presented in this slide. The first term in the cost function minimizes the electric vehicle power consumption as a function of VHNFT. The second term includes a penalty for the deviation of the host vehicle velocity from the reference velocity VREF. The third term is to penalize the excessive braking force. The fourth term ensures a penalty on the slack variable epsilon 1 to bring the host vehicle as close as possible to the stop line Dmax TS while stopping at red phase. The final term ensures a penalty on the slack variable epsilon 2 which ensures to reduce jerks between two successive timestamps. The minimization of the cost function is subjected to these equations which represent a discrete time state space model. Additionally, the optimization is subjected to several constraints which were discussed in the previous slides. The problem formulation for the Eco MPC2 in the presence of a preceding vehicle is quite similar to the previous problem formulation. The only difference is that instead of penalizing the deviation from reference velocity, the epsilon 3, which is a slack variable, is introduced to penalize the host car if the host car is outside the comfort region. The minimization of the cost function is subjected to these equations. In addition to the previous constraints, the safety constraint here is enforced to maintain a safe distance from the preceding vehicle. The soft constraint here motivates the host car to move forward and stay in the comfort zone behind the preceding vehicle. In order to test the performance of Eco MPC-1 in signalized intersections, it is evaluated against two baseline cars BS-1 and BS-2, which travel at a set speed of 14 m per second and 10 m per second respectively. To ensure a free driving scenario in the absence of a preceding vehicle, DREL is set to be greater than DTS limit during the simulations. Eco MPC-1 tracks the optimal green wave speed which is given in blue. It can be observed that due to a lengthy red phase, all the cars stop at the first traffic signal TS1. Eco MPC1 car travels at the optimal reference velocity to meet the remaining traffic light signals at green. On the other hand, BS1 and BS2 cars have experienced more stops while traveling at the driver's set speed. And comparing the energy savings, the host car equipped with Eco MPC1 has energy savings of 18.85% and 26.3% in comparison with BS1 and BS2 cars respectively. Reason is that the conventional set speed controllers follow a speed defined by the driver which does not guarantee crossing the signalized intersections at green phase, whereas Eco MPC1 tracks an optimal velocity designed to avoid unnecessary stops at the traffic light signals. This suggests that Eco MPC1 is an appropriate controller for the preceding vehicle not in the range scenario. The performance of Eco MPC2 is evaluated using two benchmark control approaches, PMPC and FTMPC. In the simulation, speed information is not considered and it can be seen from the figure that Eco MPC2 with PMPC and FTMPC tracks the preceding vehicle velocity very robustly and intervehicular distance is controlled very well. Eco MPC2 with PMPC achieves up to 13% and with FTMPC up to 12.77% energy saving benefits when compared to the preceding vehicle. Eco MPC2 uses the future velocity information of the preceding vehicle and derives an energy optimal velocity profile for the host car with smaller acceleration and deceleration manoeuvres and thus performs better than the preceding vehicle. The final evaluations are done on a realistic scenario. Here the host car follows a preceding vehicle under the influence of traffic lights. The host car is equipped with Eco MPC1, Eco MPC2 and obtains future traffic light speed information. Until 50 seconds, host car performs car following using Eco MPC2. Afterwards, preceding vehicle crosses a signalized intersection at green, whereas host car decelerates and stops at the traffic signal due to a red phase. Therefore, the relative distance between the host car and preceding vehicle increases. 
As soon as DRL exceeds 100 meters, the controller switches to Eco MPC1. After the signal turns green, the host car travels at the reference velocity for green wave until it meets the preceding vehicle again at 210 seconds. The switching repeats for the rest of the simulation if conditions are satisfied. To evaluate the benefits of Eco ACC, the host car is compared to a baseline car which consists of a set speed controller, an FT MPC and only receives the current traffic light speed information. While stopping at the traffic light signal, the Eco ACC car applies less traction force and braking force as compared to the baseline car. The host car has shown an overall energy saving reductions up to 6.5% as compared to the baseline vehicle in this realistic scenario. Finally, to conclude, an ecological ACC strategy is proposed in this work which combines the benefits of Eco MPC1 for green wave tracking and Eco MPC2 for car following to minimize the energy consumption of an electric vehicle in an urban traffic scenario. The proposed strategy requires only a small computation time for solving the quadratic optimization problem that is for a prediction horizon of 8 steps, Eco MPC1 and Eco MPC2 execution times are found to be 15.2 milliseconds and 14.9 milliseconds respectively thus proving real-time capability. Thank you very much for your attention. I am happy to take further questions.